Amsterdam. Even for those who have never visited the city, the name might conjure images of smoke-filled cafes and wild nights in the red light district. It's a city with a seedy side that doubles as a masterpiece of urban design. Its relaxed laws on the sale of cannabis, combined with its many museums, shows, canals, and cafes, help the city draw more than 5 million annual visitors. I've always wanted to visit Amsterdam, I just never saw myself going there with kids. Yet the sights and sounds of the city make Amsterdam a great place to bring kids. Just make sure you watch out for the thousands of cyclers that stream through its narrow streets and over its many bridges. For all there is to see and do, it is the canals that make the city memorable. For our kids, Amsterdam was like no place they had ever seen. After all, this is the city where much of the population doesn't even live on land. Approximately 2,500 houseboats line the city's canals, and more than a thousand bridges span its waterways. We stayed five days in the city. Our guest-to-guest -guest accommodations even afforded us a look at residential life in Amsterdam. Three extremely steep and narrow staircases greeted us as we left to explore each morning and return to each evening. Getting two large suitcases and a stroller up those steps was a Herculean task. Once outside, we discovered that Amsterdam is a very walkable city. It's much smaller than I had envisioned. On the first day, we walked over to the Nemo Science Museum, where we encountered hundreds of kids receiving a fun education. On the main floor that day, we were treated to a painstakingly prepared chain reaction that used everything from soccer balls to desk chairs in an elaborate display of mechanics and gravity. Upstairs, the kids had a blast experimenting with the different stations, which included a perilous trip on a high rise. The highlight for them, though, were the balloon powered race cars. <laughs> Once we finished inside, we made sure to check out the rooftop play area, where the kids had a chance to enjoy the windy weather and to take a few runs through the splash pad. <laughs> After leaving the museum that day, we visited Hanukkah's Boom, an eatery popular with locals that offered craft beer and some fantastic sandwiches. Speaking of craft beer, I discovered that Amsterdam is one of the best cities in Europe to find beer. I stopped into De Bierkonig on the way home that evening and found a literal bounty of amazing beers. Our first day in Amsterdam was a success. On our second day in the city, we had plans to visit the Van Gogh Museum. Unfortunately, we weren't the only ones. We discovered a one-hour line and realized that we should have bought the fast-track tickets online. We opted to explore the Stedelijk Museum next door, which features contemporary art. I, for one, am happy we visited. The museum is large, but not overwhelming, and contains some amazing pieces, including a section that features art from the De Stille movement from the early 1900s. We next made our way to Brewery Tidge, whose wide range of outstanding beers made my day. The brewery also offers food, including an ox sausage that is to die for, although the kids didn't seem to think so. Later that night, we enjoyed the delicious Indonesian flavors at restaurant Blau before ending our day at Cafe Gollum, where we enjoyed some delicious Belgian brews while the kids caught up on their coloring. We started day three at the Oba, Amsterdam's amazing public library that features a kids section on the lower level. Books are available in a number of languages and the place was so inviting that our kids might have been content to stay an entire day there. But that would have meant missing out on the Pancake Bakery, which was probably the most memorable meal our kids have ever had. That evening we took one of the many canal tours available in the city, getting a water level view of the city's vast array of waterways. I would highly recommend taking one of these frequent boat tours if you are visiting the city, particularly around sunset. We even caught a rainbow just before dark. On our last day in the city, it was time to go shopping. Amsterdam's eclectic array of shops contains some very interesting sights. We made sure to browse the bizarre cannabis paraphernalia and quite a few of the cheese stops in the downtown area as well. Hey, so we are sampling some cheese and as you know, Little Monkey is not a fan of cheese, but she does like a few. What's your take on this one? 
I like it. Oh yeah? So this is her grandmother's favorite type here. It is the smoked cheese. And you can buy it online as well. Cheese isn't my thing, but I made sure to find an Amsterdam specialty. How is it? It's okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else want to try it? No. 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 Yeah, yeah. We continued to eat throughout the day and stopped in at a few craft beer places as well. In exchange for their patience, we brought the kids to the Winkle Cafe, where the pie is delicious. Afterwards, we even found a couple playgrounds. I had never seen a tandem swing before, but it was perfect for us. And if you like cats, Amsterdam has a few of those as well. And of course, we had to check out the Red Light District, opting for the afternoon PG-13 version. We're not the worst parents in the world. What a city. When it was time for us to leave, I admit that I didn't want to go. Even with kids, Amsterdam lived up to all my expectations.